Howdy folks, welcome back to Doing Brew. I'm pretty excited about this episode folks because our full kitchen remodel is really rolling along nicely. In this video, we're going to go over countertop measuring and installation and what I'm super excited about is how to build out a Craftsman style window surround. And we're going to turn this window, the original window in the kitchen, into this. And I think that is a beautiful addition to any room in the house any window and I promise you it's not that hard to do. First thing we got to do though is measure out for our countertops. Now back in the old days when I did a kitchen remodel and it was time for countertops a whole crew of people would come in. They take a bunch of measurements and they would cut out templates and take those to the shop and of course cut out perfect countertops to fit. Now it's all done electronically and you can see each time he affixes that pointer to a point on the top of the cabinets, it draws it out. And honestly, what used to take a half to a full day is done in about 15 minutes. Now, with the measurements done, we're going to give him time to go back to the shop and cut out those countertops. While they're working on countertops, let's whip out this window. Now, I've done Craftsman style surrounds in the past, but I've never provided a really good breakdown of all of the components of a craftsman style surround. So here it is and I'll break it down in greater detail now as well as throughout the build of the window. Now you've heard me say it before but the rock star of a craftsman style surround is the entablature or head casing and that's broken down into three components. More on that in a moment. Next up is a side casing. That's just a three-quarter inch board. Below that is the stool sometimes called the windowsill and that's supported on the bottom by the apron. The apron and the stool are set off by a nice cove molding. Now, you can see at the top there, I like to have a 1 8 inch reveal. You've heard me say that before. In this window, unfortunately, because it's a retrofit, I wasn't able to do that on the right and left sides. Now, coming up next is a really important point. And I've made it before in other videos, but this is the first time with a graphic. Now, from the frieze there on the right side. See that blue line I just put up? The frieze is the top board, and then the side casing and the cove molding below. It's really important that all three of those components line up. Visually, it helps to keep your whole window in balance. Now you might think it takes some really precise measurements and calculations and such to make this happen, but it's not that difficult and I'll show you how in just a moment. So let's get building our Craftsman style surround. First thing we have to do is sand all the material we're going to be working with. Now I'm going to sand this just to 100 grit and then we'll prime everything. I like to prime everything ahead of time when possible. This makes for a little quicker job in the end. Now, hey, let me point out that I'm working in the back of my truck. Over the years, I've actually caught some grief from folks who, I guess, weren't paying attention to the videos that I put up, saying that a lot of the work I do is impossible unless you have a huge shop full of expensive equipment. I, I don't have a shop at all, and I'll build this entire window out of the back of my truck. First thing we're going to work on is the stool. Now, I saved the stool from the old window surround, and we're going to use that as a template. No sense making life harder on us. I'm going to go ahead and take some measurements just to make sure everything's going to work out nicely. I'm going to make this stool, our new stool, a little bit deeper. We put a plant or something on it. And the first thing I got to do is rip some pre primed that I did myself material down to the width of our new stool. Then we're going to lay our template out onto our new stool blank so to speak. Mark it to length. Take it over to the miter saw. Cut it to length. Now we're going to put our template back on. We know that this old stool fit the window. No sense making life any more difficult on us. We'll just go ahead and make our marks. Now to ensure that I make nice true cuts. I'm going to use my square, true up those lines, use our jigsaw to make the cut. And with
with our cuts complete, I'm going to set up the router with a quarter inch roundover bit. That's not too aggressive. It'll ease the front edge of the stool just nice enough to make it look finished. And then I'll use the random orbit sander here in just a moment just to ensure that I remove any machining marks left by the router. Get a test fit here on our new stool. And I should mention that I use the five quarter stock or one inch thick stock to make this stool, which is replacing a three quarter inch thick stool. This makes for a little bit more substantial looking stool since you're looking at it edge on. And of course making sure it's level left and right fore and aft and nailing it in place. Next up is the side casing. This is a three quarter inch thick piece of wood cut to whatever width you need for your project. I'm going to measure out from the stool up to the top of the interior head casing there. Now whatever that measurement comes to we're going to want to add one eighth of an inch for our cut. That will quote unquote force the 1 8 inch reveal across the bottom of your entoplature. Now I'm going to true up the end of a board, mark it to length, and cut both of our side casings. Once those cuts are complete, I'll bring it in, do a quick dry fit to make sure everything looks good. Now you can get a good idea here, I'll zoom in in just a moment, as to why, unfortunately, I can't do my 1 8 inch reveal on the sides. The old window casings are just too damaged. And it's not in the budget to rip the whole thing apart and start over. But we'll be able to make it look beautiful in the end, no doubt. Now, a little bit of construction adhesive. Anytime I'm doing wood to a painted surface, construction adhesive, We'll get that in place, make sure it's plumb, and secure it with some two inch finish nails that are going straight into the stud framing around this window. And we'll do the same exact thing on the left side. Okay, now begins what I consider the fun part, the entoplature or the head casing. And that's built up of three separate components. The cornice, the frieze, and a bead molding. Now the first thing we're going to do is measure for the length of our frieze board. And we're going to measure from the left side of the left casing, the outside of the left casing, all the way over to the outside of the right casing. And the length of our frieze board is that exact measurement. That's how you get alignment on your left and right side of your freeze board and the outside of your left and right casing boards. They have to line up if you cut it to the exact right measurement. Now, we're going to cut out the bead board. And this is made out of just some 3 8 inch stock that's readily available at your home store and we want a half inch overhang on each side of our frieze. So the bead board needs to be cut to one inch longer than our frieze board. Now the bead board comes with a nice rounded front edge. And of course when we make that cut, it becomes a square edge. So just using a sanding block, I'll ease that edge and round it over to match the front leading edge of our bead board. Now a quick sanding just to make sure it's ready to go. And since this is a wood to wood contact, I'm going to use type bond wood glue. Okay, wood to wood, I use glue. Now we'll put our bead board along what will be the bottom of our entoplature. Make sure we have a half inch on each side. 
and nail it into place. The back of the freeze is what is facing the camera right now. So we want the back edge of the beadboard to be as close to perfectly aligned with the edge of the freeze. All of this will face the wall when we're done building the entablature. Now, as you've seen me do in other woodworking videos, I like to fill all my nail holes with spackling, not caulking. Caulking shrinks. Spackling does not. Plus, spackling sands nicely. Next up, we're going to work on our cornice. That's made up of two pieces of material, a top board and a cove molding, which is actually a small crown molding. Now, the top board is made out of a five-quarter board, which means it's one inch thick. That makes for a real nice beefy top, really looks good. You could use a three quarter inch board, but I recommend going with the five quarter. Costs a little bit more, but in my opinion, it's worth it. Now the measurement for the top board of your cornice is easily taken. That measurement is five inches longer than your freeze board. That extra two and a half inches on each side makes for plenty of spacing to attach your small crown molding and still have a nice overhang beyond that. Next up, I want to establish the exact center point of this top board and the center point of our freeze. I'll make two marks, one on the freeze, one on the top board, and align those that way I know that my freeze is perfectly centered on the top board and therefore perfectly centered on our cornice. And here just verifying that I have two and a half inches on each side. And I want to make a couple of reference marks here because I'm going to remove the freeze and add our construction adhesive. So just to point out again, I'm putting a painted material up against raw wood. So I'll use a construction adhesive, not glue. Glue is only when you're wood to wood. Gently moving the freeze back and forth to distribute that glue and we'll roll the whole thing over. We'll ensure that uh, we're aligned with our reference marks and secure the top of our cornice to the freeze with some finish nails. And now we'll begin working on the second piece of our cornice and that's that crown molding which is a nice heavy cove molding, but it's actually classified as a crown molding found in your local home store's molding section. Of course, we'll cut this down upside down and backwards. It looks like I'm cutting the right side there, but I'm actually cutting the left side. All crown molding needs to be cut upside down and backwards. That might sound crazy, but after you've done it a couple of times, it actually makes sense. Okay, we'll cut the long piece of our crown. This is actually cut in the right side. We'll put it in place. And once we have that piece dry fit, it's time to measure, mark, and cut our returns. Now, I'm not going to do any extensive measuring here, uh, although this piece should be about three inches long from the miter. As you can see, I'm just going to hold it up there and using a pencil mark the back line and then that's just a straight cut on the miter saw. We'll dry fit that and we'll measure the same way and cut the left return. And now that we've got those pieces cut out it's time for a little assembly and since this is a wood meets wood joinery. We're going to use wood glue and a crown staple. Now, I like to use this quick seal kitchen and bath adhesive and caulking. Now, you all know I'm not a big fan of caulking, but in this application, it works out pretty nicely. 
where it's both an adhesive and a caulk. And since I'm applying it before I join up the crown to the top of the cornice, the caulking goes completely through the, the joint as opposed to just applied to the gap on the outside. This will greatly minimize the likelihood of shrinkage and the gaps that result from that shrinkage that show up as blemishes in your finished work that you have to address over time. And applying the right return with a couple of crown staples. And then we'll go back with spackling, not caulk, but spackling and fill our crown staple holes. And then we'll set our completed on tablature to the side and let things dry up while we work on the apron. So this is about the hardest bit of math in the whole window build. Your apron needs to be the width of your side casing from outside to outside edge minus the width of your cove molding that you install between the apron and the stool. That way the outside edges of your cove molding line up with the outside edges of your side casing. Now that we have our apron cut to length and you saw me rip it to width on the table saw, I need to mark the center point of our stool and our apron so I can line up the apron exactly centered on the stool. And as I always do, we'll dry fit that, make sure our measurements work out just right apply our construction adhesive, and nail our stool in place. Typically, I'm kind of sparing with the nails unless they're going to be hidden by a molding or trim detail somewhere else in the project. So in this case, I apply plenty of nails because they're going to be hidden by the cove molding. Now the cove molding is about as simple as it gets. It's three cuts, for the long piece under the apron and two returns. And those are very simply glued and nailed in place. And with the cove molding around our apron nailed in place, it's time to work on our entablature. With the spackling all dried up, I'm going to go ahead and sand this before I install it on the wall. Always easier to do this kind of work before it's installed up high where you have your hands up over your head. Now with our sanding complete, I'll apply some construction adhesive to the back of our entablature. This is a wood meets paint application, so construction adhesive plus a little bit of the quick seal adhesive caulk on the top edge of both of our side casings. And then we'll place our entablature on top of those side casings. And this is a critical point in the project here. Alex is helping me ensure that we've got alignment with the left and right side of our frieze with the left and right outside edges of our side casings before we nail it into place. Real important to get that alignment just right. And there we go folks. Our craftsman style window surround is essentially done. Pretty good. I'll take a moment now to fill all of our cracks, gaps, and seams with spackling. Please don't use caulking, but spackling. And then we'll sand two coats of primer, two coats of top coat, and that window surround is done. Now let's move on to the installation of our countertops. After measuring, now our countertops are cut and ready for install. And this is a really great day in any kitchen remodel project. The transformation is very quick, very fast to what is going to be your finished kitchen. And make no mistake about it, these pieces of granite are unbelievably heavy. If you've ever lifted these, maybe during the demo of a kitchen, you know that these huge sheets of granite are very, very heavy. Doing a little bit of milling outside prior to bringing in the countertop just to ensure it fits. And here the guys are cutting kind of butterfly cuts or slots, if you will. These are intended 
to accept a fastener which holds the sink underneath the countertop. Really nice, clean install of the sink. And once those cuts are made, our largest piece of countertop comes in. If you're ever doing this on your own, just know that that area around where the sink is going to be installed is a tremendous weak point. You've got to be really careful with that spot because if that counter is going to crack, it's going to crack right there during this point of the install. And with that large piece in place, there's one more piece to go to complete our countertop delivery. The install is not complete for about an hour or so in the actual build process. With that last slab in place, the next step is leveling all the countertops. Now all of our framing and our cabinet installs were about as level as we could possibly make them. Now these guys are going to take it to the next step, and the next level, if you will. They're going to get these countertops just perfectly level by using a small pry bar and shims, just like we used for the cabinet installs. Once we've got level established, we need to use an epoxy to permanently join these slabs together. And then see those slots that were cut out in the driveway? It's kind of like panel work in woodworking to make a large tabletop. Cut those slots in a piece of wood and then install a wooden biscuit. Well here, the guys cut those slots in the granite and then they apply a generous amount of this epoxy. Once they slide the two pieces together, the epoxy goes into those slots and kind of forms an epoxy spline, if you will, while also ensuring that the two pieces of granite are adhered together. That makes for a very, very strong joint. And then he's going to take some time to do a bit of cleanup, make sure all of the residual epoxy is off of the surface of the countertop. Now once cleanup is complete, he's going to use a razor blade to finish the cleanup, get all the epoxy off but also to check alignment of the countertops. So we have to use the rest of it. If you know here that there is no, no all together at the same. Right. But in here you hear that sound, that means it's, it's not to one. So not sure if you heard that, but moving that razor blade back and forth across this scene, he picked up a slight click or a bump towards the outer edge of the countertop. So what he's going to do here is he's going to use the torch to more rapidly set up the adhesive where he's got a good joint and then that will allow him to slightly shim. Now we're talking 64th of an inch or so, but he's going to be able to shim that little gap out and then hit it with the torch and set up that epoxy. That'll make for a perfectly smooth seam there where these two pieces of granite come together. Next up, we've got a cut for our faucet and install the sink. And with that hole cut, the guys are going to bring the sink in, apply a bead of 100% silicone caulk where the sink meets the underside of the countertop. And one of the guys will hold it in place while the other is underneath attaching the sink fasteners to those slots that they cut out of the driveway prior to bringing this slab in. And that's it guys. Our countertop is in and looks beautiful. These guys did a fantastic job on delivery, install, and finishing. The three inch backsplash really finishes things off nicely. They caught that edge Boy, really, really happy with the way this project is progressing. And here's a quick preview on what's coming up on the next Do and Brew video. When you complete a remodel, you want all the moldings to match in the space that you've just newly built. 
Well, this is no different. We're going to dress out this large hole cut to allow for the peninsula countertop in the same way we did the window with a nice craftsman style surround. It's not any more difficult, it's just a little bit bigger in scale. Of course, we'll finish this beautiful surround in the way we do all of our trim work. And here's a reminder to check out our painting trim work video. And then Alex is going to show you all how to install your cabinet drawer and door poles. Not difficult to do, but of course, like with anything else, there's a few tricks to the trade to make your job go that much easier. So I hope you'll join us for that video. Only two more videos in the kitchen remodel series to go. And then begins the remodel, the old brick farmhouse. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this video, folks. Hope to see you back here next time on Doing Bro. Take care.